100% Euler. So this must be the ultimate Kilhoman, right? Well, I think that depends on what you're looking for. Welcome back, Dram fans. Today, unbelievably, I think this is the first time I've ever reviewed a core range Kilhoman, unless you count the Loch Grunot, which isn't really because it's an exclusive. This is Kilhoman 100% Isla 2023, also known as 13th edition. So Kilhoman is a distillery that I really, really like. Depending on my mood when you ask me, possibly my favourite of all of the Isla distilleries, and that's really saying something. This whiskey that we've got here is kind of a limited annual release from Kilhoman, kind of core range. It's one that I've been doing for a long time, and the general brief of this one is that it's a proper field to bottle, 100% in house craft integrity proper farm distillery whiskey so this one here we know that it's bottled in 2023 it's made from publican barley from harvests in 2012 13 and 14 so this one here it has a little bit of a special connection to myself because i was actually on the isle of isla in july 2014 so this one would have been the barley would have been being harvested and possibly malted when i was actually there and as with all of the barley that goes into the Kilhoman 100% Isla, it was grown in the fields locally around Kilhoman Distillery, and it's all hand malted on site on Kilhoman's traditional floor maltings. We're told that the whiskey that goes into the vatting for this one is a minimum of eight years old, but some of it may be as old as 10. We know that the vatting is 44 Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels, so this one is not just 100% Isla, it's 100% bourbon matured. As with all Kilhomans, it's non-chill filtered and natural colour. What isn't like most Kilhomans, this one is bottled at a better ABV of 50%. So a little higher than your standard Kilhomans like your Sunaig and your Maca Bay, which tend to be 46. I do find it very interesting that this one is 100% bourbon matured. Some of the recent batches of 100% Isla have had a small percentage of sherry casks added as they do with the Macca Bay as well, has a very small percentage of sherry casks. So this one is a bit of a return to form to the earlier batches of 100% Isla, which in the early days were always 100% bourbon, and I'm really glad about that. Kilhoman often add a small amount of sherry casks to a bourbon matured vatting, just to smooth the vatting out, but I much prefer it without. I think that when you have a completely bourbon matured vatting of Kilhoman, it gives it a little bit more edge and a little bit more bite, whereas my thoughts are that adding a little bit of sherry possibly irons things out, but also dulls and homogenizes the vatting a little bit. What they don't mention on this one is the phenol PPM, the amount of peat in the malted barley, and that's possibly because they don't want to draw attention to it. Now, from very early on, Kilhoman wanted a true field-to-bottle whiskey, 100% in-house production everything from growing the grain to the shrink wrap around the stopper they wanted it all done on site and you can't really blame them that with the majority of Kilhomans they've not quite achieved that like with the Macca Bay and Sunaig and the vast majority of Kilhoman whiskies they're buying in industrially malted barley from the Port Ellen maltings which is the same maltings that at least until current times all of the distilleries on Isla are using. Now I say until current times because there's actually a little bit of controversy at the moment about the Port Ellen maltings which are owned by Diageo and there's been talk of the Diageo maltings at Port Ellen deciding to only supply Diageo distilleries which is kind of leaving all of those other distilleries that have always relied on them in the brown stuff. With this one though there is no Port Ellen malted barley in any 100% Isla, it's all done using their own floor maltings. The problem with that though, is that the in the early days of using their floor maltings at Kilhoman, I think it was about a year after they opened, they actually had a fire, and I think it was from an untended malting kiln. It actually set fire to the, the malt on the malt floors and started a fire which did quite a bit of damage to the buildings at Kilhoman. 
And because of that, they actually decided in the early days to limit the amount of time they spent running the kiln, which had the unintended consequence of all of the on-site malted barley at Kilhoman being malted to a much less peated PPM of about 25 compared to the stuff brought in from Port Ellen maltings used for the other Kilhomans, which runs to about twice that. So historically, 100% Isla Kilhoman has been very much on the lightly peated side compared to the rest of the range. So let's get some in the glass and see if that very expensive and labour intensive and involved process of making a whiskey all the way from grain growing in the fields to harvesting to germinating and malting and kilning, fermenting, distilling, all the way up to packaging and bottling of actually being to the bottling hall at Kilhoman and it's a very small bottling hall, a lot of work being done by hand there. Let's see if that very expensive process has been worth the cost. So we know that this is natural colour and it certainly looks that way. Beautiful bright gold on the lighter side of gold actually, almost a straw. And I think you can see, even at the full 50%, you can see that there is a slight haze to this. It's, you can see the labels, but they're not clear. It is slightly hazy. Backing up the fact that we know this is a non-chill filtered, fully intact whiskey. So Kilhoman, 100% Isla, batch 13 on the nose. Smoky, but it is a gentle and relatively subtle smoke for a Kilhoman. Don't actually say that it's more of a wood smoke, particularly a dark smokiness, perhaps more verging on barrel char rather than the heavy farmy medicinal peatiness that we get from something like the Maca Bay. Lovely little hint of sour lime on the nose. Lovely bright notes contrasting with the dark smoke. Getting some really nice creamy caramel, vanilla, bourbon oak notes. As well as a very pleasant, dry, casky oakiness. You can really smell and in a minute I'll get round to tasting that you can you can tell that they've used some really good quality bourbon casks in this. And the malt as well. The malt is very prominent in this, probably more so than any other Kilhoman, and I think that it's not a coincidence that this is a less peated Kilhoman that really allows that to come through. Creamy cereal malt actually really reminds me of if you've ever done a distillery tour at a good distillery, in particular a distillery that has an open top mash tun like Brookladdy. There's a note on the nose of this one that really reminds me of being next to an open top mash tun when they're putting the first waters in. So you've got that really sugar rich mash. Lots of bright apple malt as well. As well as, despite not being on the seashore as most other distilleries are, some lovely fresh sea air. Let's see how it tastes. Really very rich maltiness mixed with some really quality fresh bourbon casks. I think that with the average Kilhoman, I think that Kilhoman is one of the peatier Isla drams. And I think that especially with Maca Bay, that peat is front and center. I personally don't think it's a problem, but I do think that the peat kind of takes over in the profile of Kilhoman. And that's absolutely fine. But with this one, it's really not the case. I think that the grain that goes into this, the malted barley and the casks are really the star performers in this. So lovely oaky notes coming through from the cask, lovely toasted bourbon oak, apple malt, super rich apple sauce balanced with that dry casky oakiness, lovely sweet and lively effervescent sherbetty malt and a little bit of an unsweetened porridge note which I think is probably coming through from some of that cereally gristiness mixed with some 
kind of creaminess coming through from that bourbon cask. It absolutely bleeds quality despite being less of a peat bomb than the usual Kilhomans. Gonna have one more sip and look at the finish. Malty, extremely malty, all about the cereals, and lightly smoky. So it's more of a that kind of wood smoke, dry smokiness that I was getting on the, the nose, and it's there on the palate too. Quite maritime, sea breeze, and a hint of salty smoked fish wrapped up in that slightly dry oakiness. So is this the same 25 ppm malt that it used to be? In my humble opinion, yes, I think it is. It definitely seems less peaty than the Maccabay, and I think that's going to be a little bit of a disappointment to many. But I do wonder if that low ppm, which to start with was kind of an accident, might have been carried forward in the 100% Isla range on purpose. Because what you get from that lower ppm is instead it's a much more balanced whiskey with more complexity and finesse. And as I said before, it really highlights the quality of the casks and the malted barley. And really, what could be more important in a 100% Isla whiskey than the actual barley that comes from the soil of Isla itself? I think that in the absence of that heavy, heavy peat that you normally get on a Kilhoman, all of the other aspects of the whiskey just have that bit more room to breathe. Because that peat is so toned down compared to the Maca, the malt is really highlighted front and centre, and the quality coming from that malt is obviously very, very high. You also get a much clearer view of those quality bourbon casks, with more bourbon notes and more of that pleasant woodiness. Honestly, though... I do find myself kind of missing the more extreme peat of the Mecca Bay from that poor Ellen malt. But I still think that despite being a little bit expensive, I think I paid about £75 for this one, which is nearly twice the price that you're going to pay for a bottle of the Mecca Bay. Despite that, I do think that this one is worth buying. It's worth it because it lets you see a different side of Kilhoman and also for that extreme integrity production and that unique way that they're doing everything, right from the farming and the tilling of the land, right up to the bottling. Considering that the price is that much more than your standard Kilhoman releases, it's not going to be an essential or a regular purchase for me though. For me personally, the essential purchase when it comes to Kilhoman is always going to be Maccabay, and preferably the cask strength Maccabay. I think if you've never tried Kilhoman and Pete is your thing, then probably don't start with this one. I think that if you're looking for a peat bomb, you've heard that Kilhoman does peated whiskey really well, then the place to start has to be the Macca Bay. It's really good value. It's much peatier than this. Not quite as complex, but it is probably the place to start for most. Whereas this one, it's not really a true representation of Kilhoman or Isla's raw power. And I think if you already love Kilhoman and you're looking for maybe a more premiumized version of Macca Bay, then I think that you might be a little bit disappointed with this as well, because that peat, that that heavily peated profile of the Macca Bay is not quite there in this one. But I think if you're a seasoned fan of Kilhoman and you're looking for a different take on their style, and you're looking for a whiskey that allows you to analyze the different aspects of the whiskey, from the grain to the cask, and you want an opportunity to really see the quality and all the care that goes into their whiskey, this is really highly recommended, especially if you're willing to accept a slightly less peaty dram in exchange for that uber provenance and craft production. This is a really great dram, and the extra complexity and finesse justifies the extra cash, in my opinion. So yeah, that's probably about all I've got to say about this one. Is it a good whiskey? Absolutely. Will I be buying it again next year? Possibly not, but I'm going to really enjoy this one, and I'll probably check in with the 100% Isla range again in maybe a couple of years' time. Let me know what you think about this one, if you've had it, or if you've had any of the previous batches. Myself, I haven't actually been keeping up with the 100% Isla range, because it is that little bit lacking on the peat side compared to most Kilhomans. It's not really my first choice, but every time that I've had a 100% Isla, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. So let me know what your thoughts are. Do you find it a little bit less peaty than the Macca Bay? And what are the pros and cons there? Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers.
Oh, oh, oh.